Great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be back at the White Horse and to think of all the memories and the friends that have been here, enjoying a good pint or two. You know, I always liked beer and what was available were basically light lagers. And uh, so I would uh, pick up some imported beers. In fact, uh, my son Greg used to brag that his dad had the best beer fridge in the neighborhood and I always wondered why I drank it so quick. So I was interested in the company I worked for. Um, I, had, uh, I had responsibility uh, for some things over here in Europe. And I came over and uh, wow, I couldn't believe it. I mean, the variety of beer and how authentic they were and how much, how really they were different. When I came to London, uh, the pub culture really got me. How, uh, Inviting it was, everybody was there, the community, it wasn't just one group of people, it was the whole community. And uh, the ales uh, were, there was just such a wide range of them that had so much flavor. You know, I just had in the back of my mind, I wish we had that available more often. London was one of my favorite cities that I'd like to go to. And Fuller's and Young's were the two breweries of, of London and Fuller's had hops and basically Young's didn't and so that was my favorite brewery. So why couldn't Chicago have a brewery? Fuller's have been around a long time. You know, they've been brewing on this site since 1600. Uh, it became Fuller's Smith and Turner in 1845 and since then a member of the family has always been involved in, in what we do. But in the early 1900s, the destroyers were coming so big they couldn't get them under the bridges. And just beyond Thornycroft's, Fuller's owned the maltings. Really? So we had a maltings there, so we used to make our own malt. And then Adolf Hitler bombed it. And that was the end of Fuller's maltings. Hard to believe. Yeah. 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 And of course, British malt is far better than German malt. Yeah, there we go. We picked London Pride as the name of our flagship beer, as our most popular beer. But it's, it's a fantastic name for lots of reasons. It says we're in London, but it also says pride. We have, we have a great deal of pride in what we do. And, and I think that's a great thing to instill in your brewers, that they, they're proud of the beer they make what they do and there's no finer thing than walking into a pub and seeing people drinking the beer you make. Well beer is part of people's life and that's it is. an important and, and part of people's life. You know and it makes friends like we're all here because we're friends yeah. I know when I go to Chicago you're gonna look me up you're gonna look me up yeah and you're gonna say John come over and have a beer even if I don't know you and you walk into this pub and say hey I'm from Goose Island so the automatic thing is yeah let's have a beer yeah let's have a drink and, and, a and John John at one time you did that yeah. you didn't know us and you did that you did that very thing and that's that's what is so amazing and uh, yeah and we'd like to carry on that same well I'm looking forward to going to Chicago I must admit but I, I, I've always tried to operate an open door philosophy at Fuller's and I've encouraged my brewers to have that because you learn more from talking to people. I just feel that if you make rubbish beer, guess what, the world of beer is the worst place. Yeah? And if we both make good beer, the world of beer is a better place. So I want to help you out, you want to help me out. That's the fraternity of brewers. And that's what we all should be trying to do. And there's very few other industries that share that. You, you know, I am sure if you're making cornflakes and I'm sure if you're making dog food, that does not happen. Yeah. It does not happen because you cannot have that social connection that you would have with a beer. We might be com competitive at commercial level, but at brewing level, we help each other out and we talk to each other. It's absolutely mind-boggling. Absolutely mind-boggling. Why is that? Why is that? I don't know why it is. It just is, isn't it? It is. And we're better for it. Yeah. See an orange shimmer on the horizon Swallowing summer airplane pulling an air flag. When 
we started talking about how we wanted to celebrate our 30th anniversary, the idea of collaborating with Fuller's came up and everybody immediately loved the idea. Not only because we love their beers, but because this is the brewery that inspired John Hall to create Goose Island. So our 30th anniversary ale is a collaboration with Fuller's. We came up with a recipe that's on the malt side, like very much like Fuller's ESB. It's almost the same malt uh, bill as Fuller's ESB. But John really wanted to get more exotic with the hops. He asked for a more experimental American hop profile. So when we started thinking about experimental hops, the one hop that came up that we knew was probably the most exotic hop we've ever encountered is one from a hop breeding company called HBC 472. As a breeder, when you're walking these fields, you're literally seeing thousands of plants and you're just a boom, like a robot. The aroma just really caught your nose in the field. Just the hop aroma itself was really unique. A lot of coconut, oak character, not a lot of fruit character. We combine this hop on the dry hop with a hop called Denali, which does provide more of that contemporary fruit character. So it's a really a nice balance in the aroma of this beer. This is a great experience, not only because I think we made a fantastic, unique beer, uh, but we got to bring John Hall together with the brewery that inspired him to create Goose Island 30 years ago. And that was probably the smartest thing I did, without a doubt, was to open a brew pub. But it was patterned after everything I've seen in, in London, and uh, it was quite a bit different than anybody else because it was inviting for everybody. We purposely tried to uh, make it that way. The White Horse is a quintessential London pub. It's big, it's broad. In the early days, it had the best cellarmen, so their cask beers were absolutely terrific. But they had so many uh, different cask ales that were absolutely fabulous. And cask ales uh, were, you know, almost disappearing at that time, and this was really a, a great experience to come and enjoy almost everything, the best of what was available in, in England. I mean, it's probably, probably one of the biggest gas sellers in London, I'd say. Uh, wow. And this is also, this is the best place, the best way to drink cask beer is directly from the cask. the cask itself. It doesn't have any of the agitation that you'll get through the lime. And actually, if you, know, if you look at it, when you pour the beer, you get those little, little kind of bubbles just sparkling and dancing. And that is, you can tell, just perfectly conditioned beer. Mm. My gosh, it's mother's milk. Brilliant, that's exactly what it is. In many ways, it's a pub like this is what inspired me in, in doing Clybourne and bringing everything together. This is like walking into somebody's house. It's like walking into somebody's house. And that's what I tried to create at Clybourne. One of the things, uh, you know, in opening a brewery is making something. And there's nothing better than making something that people appreciate. And of all the things you can make, beer may be the best. When I look back at everything, is not only was I fortunate enough to, to make beer and experience that, but in the history of the damn world, this is the best time on the, to be making beer. So I'm a pretty lucky guy. It's been unbelievable uh, because I got everything, my whole idea from really seeing what Fuller's was doing here in London. Loved their beers and ESB was my favorite beer, but I thought that probably wasn't the beer I was gonna start with if I was gonna start in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, but to come back here and work with you and your staff here, John, and get the grain bill and everything and use some of the exotic hops that we have available to us in America right now is, is hard to believe. Almost brings tears to my eyes. I wanted two things from the beer. I wanted it to have great drinkability. But I also didn't want it to be a copy of ESB. I wanted it to be a goose, true Goose Island beer and I wanted it to be something different and move on. And, 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 you know, using, is it 472 or whatever it was, hop? Yeah, fantastic. So I found this the hop, give it something different, put this twist in. So as far as I'm concerned, those two objectives, to say in American parlance, it's been knocked out of the park. <laughs> I wanted everything. I wanted everything. I wanted everything. 
but I think that I only got most of it. Wow, was that so? Thank you. No problem, no problem. My pleasure, my pleasure, actually, you know. Absolute thrill.